Hey guys, Dave Kaufman here. So, as we go into season four with this episode, I just wanted to personally thank all of you guys for tuning in and subscribing and supporting this channel and helping it grow. I, I love hearing your comments. So right now we're gonna kick off season four here at the Madre Selva Biological Research Station. It's seven hours by boat down the Amazon from the nearest town, which is Iquitos, Peru. And one of the reasons that I was looking so forward to coming here is that the Peru Peruvian Amazon boasts the highest density of species diversity anywhere in the world when it comes to reptiles and amphibians. And the frogs and toads here are some of the most unique, the most colorful anurans found anywhere in the world. So if you want to see more about my adventures in Peru, I also recently launched a vlog channel and I've put that link in the description below. So check it out. There is something unique to see here with every step and the other critters in the rainforest, the rainforest itself, the culture of Peru. It's all found in my daily vlog. So check that out. If you like those videos, like them, subscribe to that channel as well, but check out the further adventures here in Peru. So without any further blah blah blahs, let's go check out the frog and toad species here at Madre Selva Biological Research Center deep in the Peruvian Amazon here on Zilla Presents the all-new Reptile Channel Adventures. Amazon River is one of the largest rivers in the world. It stretches from the Peruvian Andes to the Atlantic Ocean, 4,345 miles away. It is home to the most unique life forms on Earth, and our journey to this amazing biological reserve took almost seven hours by boat down the Amazon. The reserve is situated on the banks of the Amazon, which gives life to this region and is the main highway for nearly all transportation in the region. It is also the life-giving force to millions of animals and people who live here. Its beauty is unsurpassed by anywhere I've been in the world. As soon as we arrived, we wasted no time in getting out to explore the rainforest, walking the trails that led through the thick jungle in search of the most incredible amphibians found anywhere on Earth. Every crevice and every tree hit something incredible to see. Matt Cage, Mike Pingleton, and Marty Capron made up our group of herpers and each of them had an intimate knowledge of the herptofauna of the area. Yeah. Once in a while you see a dapsilus with, that's obviously classic dapsilus with a really pointed snout, mm -hmm. smooth back. The sharp-nosed toad proved to be one of the most common species we encountered, and due to their similarities with other members of Rhinella, they were often difficult to identify on the spot. This stubfoot toad is one of the most vibrantly patterned and colored anurans in the Amazon. Also called harlequin toads, they are small toads only about the size of your thumb. They, like many other amphibians, were once very common, but are now on a sharp decline. While it's listed as vulnerable in Peru, it has not been reported from neighboring Ecuador since November of 1994. An iconic frog of the Amazon are the poison frogs, also called dart frogs or poison dart frogs. Science has stopped referring to them as poison dart frogs probably for the fact that out of over 170 species, only four of those have ever been documented as being used by indigenous peoples for their toxic secretions to poison the tips of blow darts. Their toxic secretions come from formulating the formic acid in their diets of ants, mites, and termites. Poison frogs are aposomatic organisms, meaning that they boast a coloration that communicates a do not touch warning to predators. To us, this unique coloration just adds to the further beauty of these iconic frogs.
The marine toad is one of two giant species of toads native to the region. They are very common and they are prolific breeders with females laying thousands of eggs at a time. The morph rate from tadpole to adult is also high due to the toxicity of the tadpoles. My favorite toad of the Amazon is the Amazon Crested Toad. Its name, Margarita Fera, is actually considered a species complex. This means that herpetologists believe that multiple difficult to distinguish species are covered by this name, and no researcher has yet done the work required to differentiate them. The Amazon also boasts a number of bromeliad frogs. These are often distinguishable by having a relatively large tympanum, or ear, and large flat bodies. If you can't spot the frog here, well, that's the point. The marbled tree frog almost completely disappears when perched on a mossy branch. But even when sitting on a bromeliad, their camouflage still works to their favor, which gives them their other name, bird poop frog. Any predator taking a passive look at it will discount it as nothing more than a lump of bird poop and move on in search of a more appetizing meal. Of the large arboreal frogs in the Amazon, the mat frog is one that stands out. Whereas you'd think the frog gets its name from the pattern on its back, not all of them have the pattern seen on this one. And so the name actually comes from the map-like patterns on its belly. The prize for the most strikingly beautiful frog in the Amazon is no doubt the fringed or Amazon leaf frog. In fact, it has been repeatedly called the world's most beautiful tree frog. Because it spends its entire life in the tree canopies, descending to low branches only to breed, because of this, it is rarely seen by humans, let alone being filmed in the wild. It is so secretive that it has only been described by science 60 years ago. There are only two Cruciohyla species, and I am proud to say I've now filmed them both in the wild. With long, thin, muscle-impaired legs, these incredible frogs would rather walk through the trees than hop from branch to branch. Most amphibians are nocturnal and as such, every night saw us venturing out into the jungle in search of them in various habitats. One of the best ways to see the frogs of the Amazon is of course by boat at night as we patrolled the floating meadows, which is an oxbow or a slow water area of a river where the surface is covered by floating plants. We ventured down the river with the local guides and naturalists into a lake where we knew the frogs would be breeding. Of course getting there wasn't as easy as it looks. <laughs> Once we made it to a particular floating meadow, we were anything but disappointed at what we discovered there. The pygmy lime frog is a small species also known as the pygmy hatchet frog. They are only about the size of your thumbnail. The aptly named polka dot tree frog has recently set the scientific world ablaze. It has been discovered to be the world's first fluorescent frog, using a combination of lymph and glandular emissions to produce the fluorescent pigment. The compound causing the blue-green glow of the polka dot tree frog was not previously thought to exist in vertebrates, and this brand new discovery was only published two months after I filmed this frog in the wild. The rough-skinned green tree frog is a very successful little anurin in that they live and often prefer heavily depredated forests, meaning that they are one of the species not adversely affected by rainforest deforestation. They are rarely seen far from water sources where they can call and breed year-round, with females depositing about 400 eggs at a time. Ah, mira. Bueno. This little frog is so small it can perch on your fingertip. It is a common frog widely distributed in the upper Amazon basin, and it is named for the famous herpetologist Ross Allen. The variable clown tree frog certainly lives up to the moniker variable. They range in several unique color and pattern formations, like this uniform peppered pattern 
to various blotches to reticulated patterns. So identification comes not from color or pattern, but by body shape. These frogs are like yep. snowflakes in that no two are exactly alike. Uh -huh. An incredible little frog and one of my favorites of the Amazon. Look at it. Let me go. Donde? Yep. Where at? That's a little clown. Right little there. clowny. Okay. He's, he's calling. Oh yeah, I see it. Oh, oh see ya. Most knights found us walking through the rainforest trails for miles looking for the more terrestrial species of anurans. It seemed there was something amazing to see with every footstep. Yeah, look at that. Rhinella dapsilis is part of the leaf litter toads found in the Amazon. It was once a member of the taxonomic mess of the Margaritifera complex, but was separated into its own because of its pointed snout appendage and smooth skin. There are several color and body shape variations, and like I mentioned before, this made us pause in the field as we tried to properly identify them. Yeah, to rock your truck, dear Nemi. Yeah. yeah, they caught him there because uh, NASA sent him up uh, with a first space capsule. <laughs> what uh, frogs do in uh, yeah, zero gravity. <laughs> Beauty. Still, of all the anurans in the Peruvian rainforest, the giant toads were amongst the most impressive and the most fun. All right, loosey goosey. Nicely done. Nicely done. Good catch, Mike. <laughs> Good catch. That is just a. I'm waiting for him to go. mustard me. Wow. I like big toads, and I cannot lie. Guys, I can't encourage you enough to try to make it down here one day. This place is one of the most incredible places I've ever herped, and I've herped the world. So I've put the contact information in the description below for Project Amazonas and MT Expeditions. Check it out. It's not as expensive as you might think. So check it out. Email Matt Cage. He'll give you all the details on taking an echo tour down here in Peru. But the thing that I love the most about taking this tour is that the money isn't going to some travel agency. It's going into Project Amazonas which not only protects the rainforest by buying huge plots of land to protect this area, but the money is going into the local economy to help the people here with schools, with medical clinics that they would not have access to otherwise. So it's all for an incredible cause and it is one of the most incredible herp trips you guys will ever take. So our next episode, we're going to look for the snakes and lizards here at Madre Selva. So tune into that as well. And we will see you here next time on Zilla Presents, the Reptile Channel Adventures.